After that goalless draw against Wales, fans were crying out for goals. Well, I tell you what, they got six of them. Joe Keeney with a brace, Soto with two as well. Joe Reina getting his first goal for the US. Sebastian Lejet uh, joining the club as well. Uh, Casey Keller and Shaka here start with us to reflect on this game. Lots to talk about. Overall, Casey, of course, this is what you want, isn't it? As a fan, despite the opposition, goals. Well, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you can't win a match if you don't score any goals. And obviously, the U.S. scored plenty today, but it has to be taken into perspective a little bit. When you look at the opposition against Wales and, and, and what a good defensive side the Welsh are, you then come into a, a Panamanian team that just gifted uh, the U.S. opportunities. A slow start for the U.S. team, going a goal down. And then, okay, they got their three goals in eight minutes. But if you really were to fast forward into the second half, when Panama scored their second, if you had switched the goalkeepers for the two national teams, the U.S. would have been 2-0 down in this game. So, yes, they were gifted some goals. They got them, fair enough. But it really, for me, it wasn't as convincing as the scoreline showed. Oh, Casey, you and your anti-USA ways. <laughs> yes, that's me, anti-USA all the way. I got 102 caps because I really dislike my country and playing for it. But it was, but the, no, I mean, you have to look at the perspective in it, Dan. I mean, that's simple enough. I mean, it just was not as convincing away from the fact that they did score the goals, but they were gifted a lot of those goals. And, and it was, yes, you take what you're given, uh, of course, but, but still, I don't think you can really judge too much of this match based on uh, the gifts they were given. But, Shaka, you were saying beforehand on this sort of performance, they're going to win the World Cup in 2022. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. But for Casey's 102 caps, and maybe if he had a Panamanian grandfather, right now, Casey Keller would have been an upgrade on Mosquera in, in between the sticks for, for, for Panama. <laughs> Listen, the, the issue for, for the U.S. is, they, especially what we saw in 2018, they can't or, or shouldn't take CONCACAF opposition for granted. Panama 77th in the world, but 8th in, eighth in, in CONCACAF. So you have to take this for what it is. And they did exactly what was asked of them. Um, added to that six goals, remember, they also had a penalty save, so it could have been so much worse. But then in qualifying, I think the U.S. ultimately will be judged on how they perform at World Cups against opposition like we saw uh, against Wales. So there's, there's this um, dual battle in, in terms of, in terms of, of what the U.S. and, and Berhalter has to do in preparing his, his squads and going forward. They did everything that could be asked of them against CONCACAF opposition. Still a work in progress as far as European opposition and what they may face at, at the World Cup. And as, as disappointing as, as the Wales performance, if not result, was, you take what you got today against Panama. A young squad had to come from a goal behind, had to play at times where they didn't have the ball but kept themselves in the game, and you did it. You take it for what it is. I am concerned now as we're going to look at Casey's marks out of 10 for the players and given his grumpy pants <laughs> ways, uh, take a look at who got what. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, God. <laughs> uh, Gio Reyna, the only eight for you, Casey. Well, and I think what, what I would love to be able to preference was is, is if you take the first 10 minutes out of the match and then you go up into halftime, there would have been probably a a score higher on a lot of those numbers. It was just, uh, they came out the second half and they just didn't perform the way they finished the first half. They allowed Panama to get back into the game to make it 3-2. Okay, the response after that was great and, and the subs came on and did their job, uh, but it, it just wasn't consistent enough for 90 minutes and, and against uh, not a very good opposition. And, and so yes, there's, there's so many positives to take out of the match. It's just that if they want to qualify, and then as Shaka said, be judged against better opposition in a World Cup, you can't afford to have those kind of lapses. We saw what happened in qualifying the last time. You'd have a home game, you'd win comfortably 4-5-0, or five nil, and you'd go on the road and have a lackluster performance and lose a match that you shouldn't have lost. 
and eventually you end up not qualifying for a World Cup. So there has to be a way that Greg Berhalter gets some better consistency out of the team. Defensively, fantastic against Wales the other day. Today, you can see two goals against a, a far inferior opponent. It's that kind of consistency that has to, has to come around. Shaka, who caught your eye today for the U.S.? Don't talk about the Panamanian goalkeeper. Who, for the U.S., who was good? <laughs> Listen, it's, it's got to be uh, through the middle. And, and um, Casey mentioned uh, Reina, who, who, again, continues to be, continues to be outstanding. Um, they, I'd like to see uh, a bit more from, from Weston McKinney um, in, in midfield and controlling the pace of the game a little bit more. I, my, my only criticism around the U.S. is the pace of, of the game today wasn't really reflective of, of what you expect at the highest levels of, of international football. At times, you, you have to just slow the game right down, and maybe that's what the game was, or the U.S. side of the game was, was calling out for when Panama controlled so much of the possession early on in the second half. And that's where I, 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 I'm a big Weston McKinney fan, and I know he's finding uh, opportunities fairly limited at Juventus, but I, I feel he's got the talent, um, he's got the personality to better stamp his authority right in the middle of the park in controlling the tempo of the game when it's, when it's getting away from you a little bit more. So I'd like to see a little bit more from him, but given the tempo of the game and how fast paced it was, it was perfectly in, in, in keeping with what you'd expect from, from Girina, what he's used to, and, and he excelled more than anybody else. We know the U.S. fans desperate for a number nine. Where does Giochini stand after that performance today, Casey? Well, I think he, he, he keeps himself in the conversation. Uh, obviously, Soto coming in and getting a couple goals as well. There's some good size there. Uh, Joe Acchini, I mean, he's, he's playing in the second division in France. He's, he's scored a few goals this season already. Uh, he's still young. I mean, he's worth obviously having a look, but I think as the opposition gets stronger and, and let's, let's take a look at the two goals that he scored and, and obviously, you know, the penalty he missed, I mean, big deal that happens, but, uh, it wasn't as if he was really terrorizing Panama. He just put himself in the right spot, which, of course, is extremely important for any goal scorer. So I give him a lot of credit for doing that. I didn't see a lot of work in the build-up play. But again, he's a goal scorer. He's the number nine. He's in the center of the park. He scores two goals, had the chance for the hat trick. So a lot of credit. And then I think there is some, some young players. Obviously, we wanted to see Josh Sargent. He wasn't able to come. Uh, and then we're all still waiting to see, is Josie Altador still factoring into this uh, national team? So... Greg Ber Berhalter has some options, and it's a question of some players stepping up and, and, and making that decision for him. And uh, Joe Acchini didn't do himself any disservice today. I thought he really helped his cause. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Just a reminder, the U.S. did win the game 6-2. Uh, the MLS playoffs are almost upon us. Nashville taking on Inter Miami is our feature game on Friday night. You can catch it on ESPN2 at 8.30 Eastern. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.